Hello Nintendo Wii here. Today's video is going to be a bit different to normal. I'm not going to be doing a Retro Gamer Week video because I simply don't have time to do one at the moment. I've been so busy. So instead I'll be telling you a bit about my personal history with games and um, why do I play retro games. So sit back, enjoy the stories and uh, hopefully there'll be a lot more cool videos coming your way soon. So I've been really busy with work and that's why I haven't put up a lot of videos recently. But something weird happened the other day. The other day someone from work actually came over to my house to help me work on a video that I've been doing for them which was going to be shown off at some uh, presentation that they were doing. So this guy came over to my house. He has no idea about games whatsoever. He's not he's not a gamer. He even told me the only games that he's actually the only games that he actually plays are Call of Duty and FIFA. So Obviously the first thing he thought when I came into my room was just like Why do you have all these? Do you even play them? That's what he asked me. He looked around my room, he saw all these old games. The first thing he actually said when he came in was Haven't you thought about selling your GameCube games? I was like, no, why would I want to get rid of them? And she's like, and he was like, do you even play them? They're a bit old, aren't they? So He really didn't understand and it kind of made me think I've been around people with the same interest as me for so long, I actually forgot that it's not normal, in a way, that it's not normal to have this obsession with retro games, and people just simply don't understand that. Apart from people in this circle, in this group that I'm, I've obviously got myself involved so much in, I've forgot any different, so hopefully this video will clear up a lot of things like that for more the general public than the gaming community. So where do I begin? I will start right at the very beginning, when my parents first got a Nintendo Entertainment System. I was only two years old at the time. All of this is completely just what they've told me, their stories of getting the system. I have no recollection of any of this, I was obviously far too young. So they bought the NES in 1994 from a shop that's closed down now called Walworths. It was on sale, the NES was uh, the NES was obsolete by then, the SNES had already come out. So they bought this NES system, and I presume quite a few games, because as far back as I remember we've always had at least, I'd say, ten games for the system. So they bought this console, and apparently it came with Duck Hunt, which at the time, they told, they tell me, looking back, they had to sell it because, for whatever reason, I could not figure out how to close one eye and uh, hold the gun up to my other eye and be able to play the game, so unfortunately I don't have Duck Hunt or the NES Zapper anymore. Obviously they would sit down and play all these games like the original Mario Bros, the original Tetris, um, Excite Bike is one of the very early games they had for the system, Track and Field 2. Before that my dad had sort of, and mum and dad had sort of dabbled in the early computers of the time, like the ZX Spectrum and the uh, Commodore 64, things like that. But I think the NES was the first proper actual gaming system they had and actually put a lot of time into it. And for the longest time I could not beat my mum at Tetris, no matter how hard I tried. So yeah, I don't really remember spending a lot of time with the NES, but I must have, because it obviously made a long-lasting impression on me as an impressionable child that I was. And then obviously, a few years after that, when I'd started school, we got the SNES, and that is where some of my best gaming memories comes from, from the SNES. I think around 1995-96, when I was about 5 or 6 years old, maybe a bit later than that, 97 possibly. The earliest memory that I have of the SNES is actually writing a school project about something that you remember very well, and I wrote that that Christmas... I got Kirby's Fun Pack for the SNES, and it was my favourite memory at the time. And it still is one of my favourite games today, Kirby's Fun Pack is just an incredible game. So well made, the level design is fantastic, the music, everything about it is close to perfection as a platformer can get, and I still stand by that today. But um, my memories of the SNES were coming home after school, being told I was only allowed to spend one hour playing the system, so I would play Kirby for as long as I possibly could, um, come off it and just 
just remember thinking, I can't wait until I can play it again. It was that good. And some other amazing games for the SNES I had at the time, Mario All-Stars, which is the best compilation ever. It's got Mario 1, 2, 3, and the unreleased game Mario Lost Levels, which was just fantastic at the time, and that was obviously hours and hours and hours of entertainment. I never managed to finish any of them back then, but obviously now, nowadays I've, had, I've got a lot more experience playing games and I can just finish them all. No problem. But And Mario World, obviously, was another really classic SNES game. The Donkey Kong Country series. Donkey Kong Country 3 is actually one of the first games that I ever remember actually buying from a game shop, which must have been quite late. I think they came in like 98 or 99, something like that. But I actually vividly remember the game being on the shelf in-game, which was Electronics Boutique back then, which is really weird to think. And that shop in town has actually closed down completely now. It's turned into CEX, or Kex. So, my other SNES memories... Star Fox was another game that I used to play religiously. Um, I remember getting really, really good at that. And then, obviously, as time moved on, I ended up getting the N64. Just before that, I remember reading about the N64 in magazines at the time. And I always thought, I won't be able to understand Ocarina of Time. I know that's such a weird thing to think back and think that, but I really did think I wouldn't be able to understand Ocarina of Time, so actually... We got the N64 in a bunch of games that actually came with the gold Ocarina of Time cartridge. And I was stupid enough, in my childish wisdom, to think I wouldn't be able to understand the game and actually sold it and regretted it ever since I saw the reviews in the magazines a few months later and they were giving it like 9 or 10. 10 out of 10. And I was like, just because I didn't like Zelda 2. So I didn't get Ocarina of Time. What was I thinking? So yeah, some... Fantastic memories of the N64. Playing Mario 64, playing Banjo-Kazooie. What a classic game that is. Rare at the time. One of my favourite developers of all time. So, the original Banjo-Kazooie and renting banjo too. I remember that. Actually, talking about renting, we actually used to rent SNES games from Blockbuster. And one of the, one of the uh, biggest memories that stands out for me with that was renting Micro Machines 2 Turbo Tournament for the SNES. And then when when we went to return the game, they actually told us that this is the last SNES game they were ever renting out, and we could just keep it for the rental price. So I actually got what was at the time, I suppose, a thirty or forty pound game. Got it for I don't know two pound fifty. So I was really really excited about that. And Micro Machines is a brilliant game, as I'm sure you know. But as I'm sure a lot of people who aren't into this kind of scene don't know, so. I would recommend Micro Machines if you're into a racing games or multiplayer games and want to check out something a bit more old school, a bit more simple. Not in a bad way, though. Simple in a good way. Um, it wasn't all Nintendo back then, though. Someone who's friends with my dad actually gave us a PS1 around the same time. And I remember thinking, I, I don't like this. I don't like the CD technology. I don't like the loading times. The graphics are all weird and really blocky, which they were compared to the N64. But now, looking back, both of them look terrible, but... For the time, I just couldn't get over the loading times. I was so used to cartridges. I'd grown up with Nintendo, I didn't know any different. But um, I did enjoy quite a lot of games on the PlayStation now, looking back on it. The original Spyro the Dragon, the Crash Bandicoot games. Even uh, something like Music 2000, which is uh, kind of an obscure one. And uh, Vib Ribbon as well, that was one I used to play a lot back in the day. So, surprisingly, even though I was completely... Opposed to Sony, I did enjoy the PS1 at the time, and also the Sega Mega Drive as well, we got one of them, again from one of Dad's friends, I, I believe, and obviously spent a lot of time playing Sonic, but then we must have got rid of it at some point, because I didn't end up getting my own Mega Drive until many, many, many years later, in fact only about, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. Yeah, obviously at school I uh, mixed in with all the like-minded children and we all shared our experiences with the games that we were playing, gave each other recommendations, all that sort of good stuff. So really, ever since I was like 10 or 11 years old, I've known no different. Everyone that I've talked to, all my friends, everyone everyone I hung around with, we, were, we all had the same interests. So now being at work and being around other people who were not brought up with us, were unaware of all this going on, they find this kind of weird and it's kind of hard to explain to them why I have all these games and Yes, I do still find them fun and interesting to play. 
and they just, cause they just couldn't wrap their heads around that. It's a bit weird. And then uh, around the early 2000s, the GameCube came out, and unfortunately I didn't exactly have enough money to get that at the time. So I really stupidly sold off my entire N64 collection at a boot sale, including boxed copies of some really rare games like Banjo-Tooie, Smash Brothers, all these Ma- uh, Mario Kart 64 complete in box. All of these games I sold for like 20 quid at the time, and I it's something I've regretted ever since. Obviously, that, that was a long time ago, and I've, I've regained the collection now, so I've managed to get everything back that I didn't have that I lost during that time. And I traded it all in for a GameCube and Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which remains one of my all-time favourite games. But that might possibly be because I didn't have any other games to play at the time. It was literally GameCube, Sonic Adventure 2, me, every day, trying to get all 180 emblems. And that brings me to a horrible memory with Sonic Adventure 2. I made the... uh, Stupid mistake of using a third-party memory card, which you should never, ever do. And it wiped all my data. It had wiped all my data for Sonic Adventure 2 and Skies of Arcadia Legends. Since that day, I've never been back to play them games properly. 180 hours I put into Sonic Adventure 2 and it all went completely. I was, I was beyond mortified. I don't know how to describe it, but I've never trusted a third-party accessory again for any system I just I just stay stay well away from them yeah so that's my experience with that but the GameCube's a really good system can't fault it oh, I say that about every Nintendo console the next system I got a few years after the GameCube was a system that had already gone out of uh, fashion by then and that was the Sega Dreamcast I actually have a really uh, strong memory of that one Christmas I got the system for Christmas but before that my parents had been asking me what I wanted for Christmas and uh, I mentioned the Dreamcast and basically my mum said aren't all the games for that system shit and that was the first time I actually swore back to my mum I actually said no these games aren't shit they're amazing how can you possibly say that it's just something I always laugh at thinking back and she probably doesn't even remember it now but I remember getting the uh, Dreamcast getting uh, Soul Calibur Choo Choo Rocket Sonic Adventure 1 was so excited to play them games. I'd been reading about them for years before that, looking them up on the dial-up internet back then. So, so excited to get the Dreamcast. At that time, GameStation was actually still doing their retro games, and they were actually selling Dreamcast games really cheap. So I managed to amass quite a quite a collection of Dreamcast games before the end of uh, secondary school. But actually, during my final year of school, I actually found a presentation that I did back then. They said you can do a presentation on whatever you want. I suppose it was for some sort of getting you used to doing presentations and talking through in front of groups and stuff like that. I actually did my presentation on the history of Nintendo, so that might give you an idea just how nerdy I was back then, and still am today, obviously, as I'm talking about Nintendo games in front of a camera. And then after school, I went on to college to do game design, and really that's when my collecting took took off big time. I uh, I got into... All the different systems, I just thought it was all thanks to a group of people, really. But I stepped away from the whole Nintendo side of things because up until that point, I'd been pretty much more or less just Nintendo focused. I dabbled a little bit in Sony and Sega, but the, in the first year of college, I bought I bought a PS2, I bought an Xbox 360, I bought a Sega Saturn, um, I got a Sega Master System. Pretty much every other system that I could get, I got. I was lucky enough to have a part-time job as well as going to college, so I did have the money to spare, and obviously I spent it the best way I could, which is buying all these systems, which I have around today. Very quickly started massing up a giant game collection I used to visit. Boot sales, um, my auntie and uncle at the time, they were they were going to boot sales themselves and bringing me back boxes and boxes of games that they found along the way. People were giving me games for birthday and Christmas and stuff. Game Station was fantastic. Every day after college, I would go back there, pick up a few retro games. I did my work experience at Game Station during school, so I picked up a load of cool stuff from then as well. Uh, eBay was really taken off, and I managed to get my own card then, so obviously I could buy things off eBay. There was a few really cool retro shops in Shrewsbury that I visited. Really everything picked up around college. Then I started uni, and back then, uni actually had some good game shops, most of which have disappeared these days, but 
it just kept going and going. I remember buying so many games, I used to line them up on the side of my wall in first year. And by the end of the year, the whole wall was full. The whole shelf behind me was full, and the other shelf was full. I'll see if I can find some photos, because it's pretty funny, actually. And then, yeah, that pretty much brings us up to today. Uni was four years long, and obviously I went to a lot of expos around that time. Learned about game markets that I visited. If you've seen some of my more recent videos, you've seen the, some of the places I've been to buy games. I'm always on the lookout for games. Every time we go on holiday, I'm always looking out for game shops. Always have a look on Foursquare or Google Maps, see what's around, see what I can do. I just love love the hunt of finding games. And uh, last year, my collection took another big leap forward when I visited Japan and uh, went to somewhere I've wanted to go my entire life. That was Akihabara, and that was one of the most amazing experiences ever. And I'm going back there next year to get even more. I came back with over 60 games. The suitcase was jam-packed full of games that I'd got in Japan. I got a load of consoles, I got a load of handhelds, I got all sorts of things. I've made three videos that are like an hour long just uh, just talking through all the stuff that I picked up there. It was really amazing. And uh, hopefully I can take some more video next time next time I go. That brings us up to today. For the last seven years you can go back and look at my games I bought recently videos. So obviously as well as collecting all these retro games. I'm still keeping up with all the modern systems. I've got a Wii U and I've got a PS4. And I play them now and again. They're not really my main focus. I still like the 16 and 8-bit systems the most, I think. But recently, the reason I'm playing more retro games than anything is just because they're quicker, they're easier to play, and I just, I just feel more at home playing them than I do playing something that would take me like five or six hours to get into. I can actually just flick the switch on the SNES or the Retron 5 now. Just play a game for a few minutes, get the get the idea of it, film some stuff for YouTube if I have the time, but it's just kind of a comfort thing for me these days. And uh, I don't think I will ever stop liking retro games. It's, it's just, it's in me. It is just me, it's just, can't do anything about that, but I wouldn't really want to. I don't imagine anything changing in the future, I'll just keep collecting as I do, keep, until my room fills up and I've got no more space for all this stuff, it's... Uh, getting to be a bit of a tight squeeze already to be honest hopefully i can keep this up keep making videos because i do really enjoy sharing all these games with you guys and uh, just spreading the word about some games that people may not have heard of before so thanks for watching hopefully i'll get back to doing retro game a week you can always uh, follow me on twitter if you want just general game chat game updates and i've also got a website which i haven't really been able to keep up with uh, posting things on there recently but hopefully i'll get back into that as well so go visit nintendowiiu.com if you want some more gaming goodness from me. So that's all for now. I'm visiting uh, a friend's house this weekend, so maybe, fingers crossed, I'll find a game shop while I'm out there. Maybe take some photos or video. And uh, got an expo the week after. Some more games from then, so maybe there'll be another games i got recently video soon. Who knows? Anyway, that was a quick summary. A, a little life story, if you will, up until today. Hope you enjoyed this. It's a bit different to my usual videos. Keep watching. Stay tuned. Subscribe if you like what if you like my content. Go and check out all my other videos. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.